Hey guys, I'm Styler and in this video I'm going to review the Yumi Emax Mini which is a very nice small 5 inch power phone. So the Emax Mini is very similar to the TCL 3S and uh, that is because it is actually produced by TCL under the Yumi name. TCL have also before worked with Alcatel which is another known brand. Today Yumi and TCL are working together so we will probably see better devices in the future. So some of the highlights are a 5 inch full HD sharp display, the Snapdragon 615 octa core clocked at 1.5 GHz, 13 megapixel Sony Samsung camera, a lot of built in sensors like gyroscope and e-compass, a notification LED and also touch buttons with backlight, and for the price it overall comes with some really nice hardware. So if you want to see the accessories included in the phone, please go to my channel and search for my Yumi Emacs Mini Hands-On video where I do a complete unboxing or check the video description, I will provide a direct link below. Let's have a look at the phone design. On the top we find the light and proximity sensor, single colored notification LED, the ear speaker together with the 8 megapixel front camera. The phone has a 5 inch full HD sharp display with 443 ppi. So it is very sharp and bright. In the bottom we find the back, home and menu. And the back and menu have backlight while the home doesn't. On the back side which is removable and made of plastic with a nice circular texture. We have a 13 megapixel Sony Samsung rear camera. Together with a strong single LED flash and a noise cancelling microphone. Inside the phone we will also find a 3050mAh battery. Which is pretty much for such a small phone. And last we see the Yumi brand. In the bottom of the phone we find the micro USB port with USB on the go support and something that looks like two speakers but in fact it is one microphone and one speaker and the sound will only come out of the right side. On the right side we find the volume rocker together with the power button. In the top we just find the 3.5mm headphone jack and last on the left side we don't have anything. So let's open up the back and let's have a look. And it has support for micro SD card and dual SIM. Notice also that uh, you can't really remove the battery because it's built in. And let's check out the phone. So it support double tap to wake. And we also see some shortcuts here on the lock screen. Let's just unlock. So here you see the stock launcher, the UI, and also this clock here with the weather. Let's just scroll a little bit here so you can see. It's okay, smooth, nice. And we also have an app drawer. And you can also click here on the weather to see the temperature. Let's also have a closer look at the buttons. So you can see we have backlight in the back and menu, but not here in the home. This is just a silver circle. So this back and this menu. Let's try to click here on menu. We see the multitasking overview. But unfortunately you can't change the back and menu positions. So the back will always be in the left side and menu in the right. And one nice detail is also check the clock here, the timer. You can see actually it's animated. So it moves. Let me try to click here on the music player. And you can see this nice animation. Like cards folding up. And uh, regarding the connectivity, you can see the Wi-Fi is really good and also the network. I'm using dual SIM right now on uh, 3G. So uh, the reception and also the networks are fine. I did not notice any kind of problems or issues while I tested the phone. And now let's check out the camera. Okay, so we have the camera app here. So we have here for the front facing, we have the flashlight, we have the settings. 
So you can see we have auto mode, HDR, panorama, manual mode, time lapse, QR scanner, and face beauty. Let's see here in the settings. More settings for the picture, the size, 13 megapixel or 10. Video quality up to full HD. And we also see here electronic image stabilization. And uh, here are some samples. So the quality is okay. Let me just zoom in. And uh, as always, I have taken some samples using the rear camera sensor in order to show you how the device performs. Take a look at these samples and be the judge yourself. The link to the samples can be found in the video description. But overall, I think the camera is average because sometimes it's actually hit or miss. The rear camera in daylight and also the front facing camera are not bad. I would say they take some decent pictures actually, but uh, don't expect too much in low light. The rear sensor is a Sony IMX214, while on the front it's uh, an Omnivision sensor. And uh, let's check out the viewing angles. You can see here from the bottom from the side good viewing angles sharp picture in full HD and very vivid colors really nice display in my opinion and let me also check out the LED flash in the dark you can see it's okay fast when it has the focus, but if there's no focus, it does take a little bit of time. And here you can see the picture. Let me see if I can zoom in and it's okay sharp, I would say. And let's also test out the autofocus. So let me see. Yeah. Here, yeah. focus. So this seems to work. Okay. Let me try my finger. Yeah. It does work. And it's pretty fast. And uh, here you see now the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And uh, when you use earphones, this, the sound is actually clear and loud with good bass. So there are no issues using earphones with this phone. And uh, regarding the frame, I believe it is plastic, but uh, it's really hard actually. And we also have some buttons also made in plastic. But when I do like this, you can hear it's totally hard and solid. Now let's have a look inside the settings and we see SIM cards, SIM 1 and SIM 2. You can choose for data, SIM 1 or 2 here also. Then we have gestures, double tap to wake, we have turn over to mute or turn over to deactivate the alarm. Let's check out the Highest brightness, very, very bright, and the lowest. Then we have the lock screen, and you can see here display shortcuts on the lock screen. We have LED indicator. So inside here we have no settings because there is only one color in white. We have the storage, see total space and available. Support for micro SD card and also USB on the go. We have the battery and here you can also enable for percentage. Let's see the RAM consumption. And we can see here free about one gigabyte of RAM. The phone totally has two gigabyte. And here cached. Let's see in sound and notifications. So here you can adjust the sound, the ring volume and notification volume. We also see JBL, activate all audio effects for media player. Language and input, let's check the language. So it is multi-language. 
but there are not so many languages to choose from. Let's see in accessibility. And you can set up the power button to end the call. Disable or enable auto rotation. So that's it. Let's see in about. See the version, the build number. Android version 5.0.2. And it has support for OTA. Wireless updates. Let's check the Android version. Lollipop. So that's it for the settings. In the rest of the video I will show you some results from different test apps and in the end I will run a game and tell you about the pros and cons so stay tuned if you want to know more.
And now to my personal pros and cons. First the pros, it has a very good and solid design. It supports notification LED and the touch buttons have backlight. It has good sound quality from the built-in speaker. It has good gaming performance. 
It has a sharp full HD display and uh, while I tested the phone I did not find any kind of clouding, ghost touches or pixel arrows. So the screen quality is really good. There are no heating problems. Uh, it only gets a little bit warm on the back while gaming, but that's nothing to talk about. And last, it has really many sensors built in, for example e-compass and, and gyroscope, and Google Cardboard works perfect. So the cons are that uh, there is no LTE Band 20 support, it only comes with Android 502, and in my opinion this should at least have been 5.1. Also the back button, uh, in the capacitive buttons, is uh, on the left side. For me uh, that is a little bit strange as uh, I'm used to that uh, this button is always on the right. It comes with a pre-installed Chinese app called One Cleaner. Uh, it just makes the phone slower actually, so I recommend just to disable or remove it. While I tested the phone I also noticed that the video player has a small bug, uh, so you can't see the timeline correct when you play a movie. On my version here I also had an annoying background noise in video recording mode. Uh, I'm not sure if it's on all devices or if this is a software bug or hardware bug. And last, there's no way to root this phone yet, at least I haven't found a way yet. Maybe in the future, in the near future there will be a way, but for now it's not possible. So personally I think the Yumi Emax Mini is a small cool 5 inch phone. I like that it has so many sensors built in because it is rare that I see a 5 inch budget phone that actually also works with Google Cardboard. Things like connectivity, build quality, camera, sound quality and the performance is all good. But still there are some few bugs uh, that I have mentioned uh, and I hope Yumi are going to fix these soon because then it will be the perfect device. That's it for the review, remember also to check out my blog, you find the link in the video description. If you have any questions please comment below, give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.